In this video, I want to compute the limit as theta goes to zero of sine of theta over theta. So what I've got here is a circle of radius one. And from the center to the edge of the circle, I'm drawing a line that connects the center zero, zero to some point in the first quadrant of the circle. Uh, and then I'll construct a perpendicular at the end of that. So I have an inscribed triangle inside of a circle. Now that piece that I'm making blue right now, that's the arc length. That length of that is actually equal to theta. As long as you're using theta in radians, that arc length can be used as a length or an angle measure. That's, the, that's what's so beautiful about radians. You can do stuff like that. So the actual length of the arc that spans from the point one zero up to x y is theta. So I've got that in place. Now I'm going to start labeling my triangle. Um, it's pretty easy to see that the height of the triangle is y and the width or the base of the triangle is x. Now you know that sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Well, the opposite of the angle theta is y, and the hypotenuse is 1, since the circle has radius 1. So, sine of theta is equal to y. So what I'm going to do is replace y with sine of theta. It's a little bit easier to follow if I do that. So the height of this triangle is now sine of theta. And I think you can see, just by looking at it, that arc is longer than that straight line. So sine of theta is less than theta, but I'll say less than or equal because at zero they are actually equal to each other. So anyway, sine of theta divided by theta is less than or equal to one. Of course, if I divide by theta, I'm assuming theta doesn't actually equal zero. So I could probably made this a, a strict inequality, but nonetheless, I don't need all that. Now I'm going to come to the same circle, circle of radius one, and I'm going to draw something of a an exterior or a circumscribed triangle. I'm going to start from the point one zero and draw a perpendicular line. And I don't care about the length of it because then I'm going to start from the center of the circle again and connect uh, the center of it to this line using the same angle theta as before. So I just let the line or the, the uh, radius line extend a little bit. Remember, theta is still the length of the arc that spans from 1, 0 to that point on the circle. Now, I have an exterior right triangle. I'm going to call the height of it y prime. And the base of it's equal to 1 because we're dealing with a circle of radius 1. Now, you know that tangent theta equals opposite over adjacent. And here I, I made a mistake. I, I, I think you know I narrate these after the fact, so let me change that back to a d j so that equals y prime over 1 so the height of this exterior triangle or the circumscri circumscribed triangle is tangent of theta so once again just like before you can just look at the picture and see that tangent of theta is greater than theta but just to keep things simple I'll put greater than or equal to now what I'll do is I'll divide by theta. At the same time, I'm going to multiply by cosine of theta. Since all these quantities are positive, I don't have to worry about any sine switches or not. So sine of theta over theta is actually greater than or equal to cosine of theta. So I know I fix it. Just give me a second while I scroll down and my brain catches up. There it did. So we're going to change that one to cosine of theta. So now I've got the inequality that I want. I've got cosine of theta is less than or equal to sine of theta over theta. This positive theta now. And that's less than or equal to 1. Well, we talked about this earlier. The limit as theta goes to 0 of cosine of theta equals cosine of 0 which is equal to 1.
So the limit of one as theta goes to zero is just one. So what you have is cosine of theta and one are both going to one. That forces via the sandwich theorem sine of theta divided by theta to equal one or squeeze theorem. I don't know what theorem, what I'm calling it. It's either squeeze or sandwich theorem. Now that was true for positive values of theta. If you happen to have negative thetas that you're going to zero from, it's no big deal because when you plug in sine of negative theta over negative theta, sine of negative theta equals negative sine theta because sine is an odd function. So the negatives can cancel out. So therefore, uh, I get the same thing. The as x go or as theta goes to zero, sine of theta over theta is one.